Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master on a daily basis. Thank you so much for joining us. We close out this wonderful study on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. No success without a test. And they were tested. Boy, were they tested. Their convictions was tested. Their courage was tested. Their values were tested. Their determination was tested. And you will be tested, tested also as a precursor to promotion, as a precursor to success. The king, remember, sets up this image and says, at the sound of the music, everyone should stop what they're doing and bow down. They will not bow down. And because they will not bow down, they're suffering the consequences of being thrown into a fiery furnace. They've been tied up. The furnace has been heated seven times hotter. They've been bound and thrown into the furnace. Now, what I want you to notice is this. Up to this point, all we've heard from is we've heard from the king. He has spoken. We've heard from the haters who told the king and snitched on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in order to get them fired and moved because they wanted their position. Heard from the king, we heard from the snitches. We've heard from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who said that uh, king, our God is able to deliver us and he will deliver us out of your hands, but if not, we will not bow down. We will not, we've heard from, from three entities, the king, the haters, and the Hebrew boys. But up to this point, who have we not heard from? God. God has been silent during the whole situation. And there will be times in our life when we're in trials that we that God seems to be silent and distant. Baby, never forget that even though God's not saying anything and God is silent, it does not mean that God is absent. God is involved. God is aware of what's going on. Now, notice what happens in verse 24. We're closing this out. Notice what happened. Verse 24 says, but suddenly Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and explained to his, exclaimed to his advisors, didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did. They replied, look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound walking around in the fire unharmed. The fourth looks like a god. Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of a furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out. Come, servants of the Most High God. When he talked about God earlier, he used a small g. Now he's using a big g. He's talking about the Hebrews' gods, Shadrach's God, Meshach, Abednego's God. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire. Stepped out of the fire my god then the high uh, then the high officers officials governors and advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them not a hair on their heads was sins and their clothes was not scorched they didn't even smell didn't even smell smoke then nebuchadnezzar said praise to the god of shadrach meshach and abednego he sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defied the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any God except their own God. Therefore, I make this decree. If any people speak whatever race or nation or language, speak a word against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will be torn to limb, limb from limb, and their houses will be turned to heaps of rubble. There is no other God who can rescue like this. <clears throat> and that is true. There's no other God who can get you out of trouble but the true and living God. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to even higher positions in the province of Babylon. Now, what is God saying to us and to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in this story? I think, first of all, God is saying that I am always with you. You can trust me when you can't trace me because God has been silent, but I will be with you. Remember, there was a fourth man in the fiery furnace. The, the, the king thought it was an angel, but it was not an angel. It was God. It was Jesus Christ who was with them. 
Isaiah chapter 43, verses two and three says this. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Who do you think Isaiah is talking about? He's talking about these Hebrew boys who survived the fiery furnace because God says, I will be with you. Now, he didn't say you wouldn't go through it, but he says, I will be with you. A second thing we learned, I think God is teaching us, is that sometimes God will allow you to go through a fiery furnace because God wants to free you back, free you from what's holding you back. So notice in verse 25 of Daniel chapter 3, verse 25, that it says this. Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound. The only thing that burned from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was the ropes, the things that had them bound. And sometimes God will allow you to experience something so that you can be freed up from fears and anxieties that uh, and worries and troubles. You know, sometimes when you've gone through some things and you've survived what you've gone through, then when things come into your life, you know, it doesn't bother you. You already say to yourself, you know, I've already been through this. So you, they've been unbound as a result of the fiery furnace. And we get loose in a way that we never get loose as a result of going through the fiery furnace. God is with us. Uh, they're in there walking around unbound with God in the fiery furnace. I think a third thing you can learn is this, is that God allows us to go through some things so that we not, will not be intimidated. Nebuchadnezzar tried to intimidate them, but, but now because they survived the fiery furnace, because they were people of conviction, they were no longer intimidated by Nebuchadnezzar or anyone else because they said, look, if I can handle Nebuchadnezzar, I can handle anything. And sometimes God allows us to go through some things to build up our spiritual muscle, our muscles of confidence. So we can say, you know what? I've survived the fire furnace. I survived the stroke. I survived unemployment. I survived a traumatic experience, a traumatic childhood. I survived this. So if God brought me through this. God can bring me through anything. God wants to mature me. Psalm 62 verse 12 says this. It says, you made men ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. And you brought us out into a place of abundance. As a result of going through some things, you come out in a place of abundance. And here's the good news. <clears throat> Something I want you to remember is that they came out. And so were you. And they came out unharmed. Verse 26 and verse 27 says this. But suddenly, verse 26 says, excuse me, then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire. Verse 27 says, then the high officials, officers, officials, governors, advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them. Not a hair on their head was singed. The clothing was not scorched. They didn't even smell like smoke. In other words, they didn't look like what they had been through. In other words, it's almost like they didn't even, you couldn't even tell they'd gone through some stuff. And, and, and God's been so good to us. All the hell we've been through, and it has not made us crazy because God has been with us so much so that we have to tell folk what we went through because they really can't tell we have gone through all that we've gone through. There's no sign that we've gone through it. God brought them out unharmed. And here's the good news. Because they had conviction, they became witnesses and helped advance the cause of God. And other people started worshiping God. Verse 28 says, Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants. No, he didn't send an angel. He, God came down himself. In other words, now people are starting to take God seriously. And people take God seriously because of what they see in us. When you are a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to your family or on your job, it helps convert other people to your faith. And then finally, verse 30, we started on Monday with verse 30. We closed with verse 30. Then the king promoted 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to even higher positions in the province of Babylon. We started Monday with the 30th verse of how they got promoted. But then we backtracked and went through verses 1 through 29 to show that they were tested before they got promoted. Because here's the takeaway from the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The takeaway is simply this, is that there's no promotion, there's no success without a test. Bottom line. So guess what? You're being tested right now. You're in the fiery furnace right now. People are threatening you. Well, could it be that God's going to use this as the means to which God gives you what you've been praying for? And that is a promotion and success. Be careful what you pray for because you, God may give it to you, but God may take you through some things in order to get you to what you've been praying for. They were already successful, but now they've gone to another level because of what they've gone through. And sometimes to get us to another level, God will allow us to have haters, fiery furnaces, but God will keep us. God will be with us. People will smell the, and won't smell the smoke. No hair will be singed because God is with us. So you don't get discouraged. Hang in there because there's no, there's no success without a test. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and what we've learned this week and help us to write some important notes down in our journals, in our prayer journals, and in our, in our Bibles. And help us to go over them until they become a part of our lives and our thinking. Bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you so much for being with me this week doing the Powerful Points to Ponder. It's good to be back. I've been away for a couple of weeks, but now I'm back, and I'll be back again next week by the grace of God. Look, this is Saturday. We're excited because tomorrow is the Lord's Day. I've got a special word. I'm doing a series on the book of Ruth, and uh, I hope you'll join us tomorrow for our study on the book of Ruth in church. So uh, the worship service uh, begins uh, at... Uh, at nine o'clock, and then we have uh, with the pre-worship experience at nine o'clock, and then the worship service actually begins at nine thirty. You don't want to miss the pre-worship experience. A lot of good information that can bless you. But until then, we'll pick up um, on powerful points again next week. But until Sunday comes, you stay blessed. Have a great Saturday, and don't forget to stay safe, stay sane, and remember that God is in control. Love you much. See you in worship tomorrow.